you uh, love movies. Mm -hmm. I read this somewhere. Yeah. You mentioned Blade Runner as a favorite. Number one of all time, the, the final cut. That's my go-to. So you would say uh, Blade Runner is the greatest movie of all time? It's one of the greatest movies of all time. And what's, it is what's my in, What's number, in the top? My, what's, my top five, uh, Blade Runner, final cut. This is the original Blade Runner. And I used to own, on tape, the original VHS cut. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and uh, and I had the director's cut on DVD. Why Blade Runner, by the way? What, what As a kid, I just thought it was so cool. There was something about it that really spoke to me. The whole cyberpunk landscapes and uh, you know, this guy chasing down rogue uh, androids, replicants, and is all it, this. Uh, is it just the entire cyberpunk uh, universe well, or is it just of, robots as well? No, it's, it's, I mean, the cyberpunk universe is part of it. Uh, on, the, on the surface, I have a, a, I've always tended towards dark subject matter, uh, like things that are of the dark, so to speak, are things that I've always been gravitated towards. Mm -hmm. I think maybe part of it is that the things that are darker are more accepting and more upfront with death. Yeah. And perhaps I think that maybe that is what was- uh, Yeah, somehow more honest, all, perhaps. And there's also the aspect of uh, rebelliousness usually. Like there was, uh, I was never one to want to just do what somebody told me to do, you know. Um, I'm not sitting around trying to always be such a radical individual that I, I can't take orders. No, in fact, I'm more than willing to take orders from somebody that I feel is competent and has merit and reason behind what they're doing and it makes like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm 100% for it. Not only will, can I take orders, I will help you achieve whatever it is if I think it's worthwhile, um, even at, my own expense but uh to get to that point is a rarity like it's just not not a given and so you can even imagine like being a grade school teacher and this kid doesn't respect you and he doesn't really think you're that smart <laughs> they don't really appreciate that but um so cyberpunk is number one what else is cyberpunk there? is kind of number one it's a it's an environment i love but at the same time conan the barbarian by john millius <laughs> is one of my favorite films of all time uh and you know, that's such a pure film in a way, like the motivations are pure. They're very easy to follow, but not lacking in depth. You know, it's not, it's not just explosions and, and teal and orange. It's, uh, it's, it's more on the human condition and I love it. And it's shot incredibly well. It's got an incredible soundtrack. Yeah. I fucking love it. But with Blade Runner also in a deeper sense, you know, again, the human condition, you know, you start seeing like, what, what is, what is being, what is being human? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, how does this relate to, well, if you can make it and you can tell it what to do, at what point is it like you should or you shouldn't, you know, why do you get to determine what's alive and what's not, what's a life that should be allowed to live and what isn't? And what would be the strain of being Roy Batty and seeing all these incredible moments that with his passing will no longer exist, especially if he hasn't had a chance to put that flame into another torch, so to speak, if he hasn't written them down, if he hasn't passed them down to somebody else. It, it gone like tears in the rain. Like tears in the rain, that scene is incredible. Uh, I mean, but it's funny because those two universes are very different going to the barbarian. And mm -hmm. Cyberpunk is there. That makes me curious about what else might be in the list. Of the top. <laughs> uh, well, let me think. I mean, it's a pretty. Do you like like list. the there, Godfather there, there, there is type a, of universe? No, no. I mean, I'm sure the God. I've never actually even watched the whole Godfather. No, but also like uh, was it like, Casino, Goodfellas? Goodfellas is a good movie, but no, that's not in my top. It's it's a good flick, uh, but it doesn't really do it for me. Uh, I if people really want to get into this a little more, I did make a hundred a list of a hundred, hundred of my favorite movies on oh, yeah? my Facebook fan page. Nice. Uh, but, uh, do you remember what, like, some, some Oh yeah. Like top? blazing saddles is on there. <laughs> Raiders of the lost Ark, Um, uh, Valhalla rising by Nicholas from winding Refn, uh, uh, maniac by, uh, William Lustig. Uh, it's a 1980 gnarly video, nasty horror movie mm. about a serial killer uh who murders women and scalps them 
uh and it's gnarly as hell and very brutal and very bleak and very uh um i mean it's the kind of thing that like a lot of people would have a real hard time watching but uh one again i like things that are dark but two i thought the performances were fantastic in this film and they really got out the i think what the underlying thing was and it was you know the, it was a guy who was basically just like run amok by the overbearing mother uh Jungian archetype and it she was she imparted her insanity into him and he but yet there is this aspect you could see of him of him wanting to try and actually be able to be in the world and have love and have uh, a feminine companionship to go with with his masculine aspect but he had no way of understanding how to really make that happen and he had a complete negative connotation to the feminine so his struggle with and there's a little part in the in the movie where he somehow comes across this model or something and they actually he starts to feel like maybe he might be able to actually have a relationship with somebody and it goes somewhere but uh yeah uh, even the elijah wood remake i felt was really well done and captured most of the essence of what the movie was about but i still feel like the original by william lustig uh is the best what's the greatest uh love movie of all time greatest love movie of all time so like something where love is, under, I mean, I suppose love underlies most of these movies, and especially like the dark. I mean, hell, Takashi Miike's films are all about family, <laughs> of all things. Yeah. As bonkers as those movies are, they the general theme is family almost entirely in all of his films. Uh, yeah, there's there's very. I mean, even you can argue Blade Runner. Yeah, there, the it's, greatest, it's, it's everywhere. Is love film of all time. Uh, that's interesting. I mean, is Excalibur a film about love? Uh, what's Excalibur about? King Arthur. Excalibur is about uh, Arthur uh, becoming king of the Britons and his love of his his country and his love of Guinevere. But eventually, yeah, it becomes more of about um, the the necessity for the king to love to to hold hold Excalibur to stay to to realize that while if you're the king you can love your wife and you can love your best friend and they may f fuck each other behind your back and as they fall in love too but at the end of the day your responsibility your your love has to be to the to, to the country and everyone else first and not your own personal uh wants which you know well, made, made a much more interesting story when you have uh carmen Berenina and and <laughs> Or was it, or, oh, oh, what is that one? It's it's a German opera, but, uh, you know, and horses and slow-mo and sword yeah. fights and an epic death scene between uh, Arthur and his, his son. Okay, yeah. now I definitely have to watch it. And I haven't watched it. I'm embarrassed. Uh, it's, uh, it is John Borman's second film in Hollywood. His first one being uh, Point Blank with Lee Marvin, which is also on top uh, one of the upper echelon movies on my list. Uh, derived from a book by called The Outfit by uh, what is his name? Uh, I forget, but Darwin Cook, the um, comics illustrator, he did. Donald Westlake wrote. So Darwin Cook does does an amazing comic book send up of Darwin Cook's novels, and they are fucking incredible. So, anyways, but uh, the Point Blank with Lee Marvin, uh, you know, it's a man driven by purpose revenge but also by like really pure motivations he wants his money he was he was betrayed he, uh, and he wants his his cash because this is what he agreed to do the thing for and this is which also is part of the reason why i like no country for old men so much which i felt was a, great, a movie. great great movie even better book but uh i remember talking to my friend and i go you know anton chigger is the most pure human being in that whole book like, well that guy's the villain i go ha -ha. is he evil like, yeah. he's the one he lies to no one he does everything he says he will do he always follows his word and on the rare occasion he, he allows fate to make a decision as he figures like well whatever all led us to here will will, will will lead us one way or the other and if we're at this crossroads what how is there any better or worse way than to do it over a coin flip 
And so that whole scene where the guy is going, well, wh what am I putting up? And he goes, everything. You've been putting it up every day of your life. And that's true. Everything we do is a, is a, is a, is a decision, is a calling, is a, is a choice. And it toward, and then it bummed me out that they, they reduced the last interaction between Chigger and uh, what's-his-face's wife. And he finally finds her. And she's like, you don't have to do this. And she's, he's like, yes, yes, I do. <laughs> this is the way it is. You can think that your life could have turned out any sort of ways. You could have done this, you could have done that. But the reality is, this is the way your life is. And it's the way it was always going to be. You know, the fact that I'm here is, is the end of it. And that's that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's funny. If you're honest, this is what dark movies reveal, that the villains are the, the purest of humans and uh, can teach us the most like profound lessons. And that's, that's certainly an uh, example of it.